Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I am looking at Stargan 2 ADA PyTorch. Yes, this is the PyTorch release of Stargan 2 ADA. No longer do we have to use the rather archaic TensorFlow 1.14 or 1.15. No, we're on PyTorch 1.7.1 here. Excellent stuff. So let's have a quick scroll down and see what is going on in these release notes. So, correctness. We've got full support for all primary training configurations. Extensive verification of image quality, training curves, and quality metrics against the TensorFlow version. Results are expected to match in all cases, excluding the effects of pseudo-random numbers and floating-point arithmetic. Performance. Training is typically 5-30% to faster compared to the TensorFlow version on NVIDIA Tesla V100 GPUs. Inference is up to 35% faster in high resolutions, but maybe slightly slower in low resolutions. GPU memory usage is comparable compared to the TensorFlow version, but there is faster startup time when training new networks and also when training pre-trained networks. Okay, and there are a few new command line options for tweaking that training performance, which I will go into towards the end. Now, compatibility. It is compatible with old network pickles created using the TensorFlow version, which is amazing, uh, but there is a new zip PNG based dataset format for maximal interoperability with existing third-party tools. So it's still quite big, but the zip makes it a little bit smaller. Uh, TF record datasets are no longer supported. There is a converter for that. And we've got some new JSON-based format for logs, metrics, and training curves. Uh, training curves are also exported in the old TF events format if TensorBoard is installed. Uh, command line syntax is mostly unchanged. Uh, there are a few exceptions. They note their dataset tool and the comparison methods are not supported and truncation is now disabled by default. So there is their data repository, lots and bits of pieces going on there. So let's dive into some of the requirements. So either Linux or Windows operating systems, but they recommend Linux for performance and compatibility reasons. One to eight high-end NVIDIA GPUs with at least 12 gigabytes of memory, although as I've seen before with the previous versions, you could probably squeeze it into eight gigabytes if you're using low resolutions and small batch sizes. And they have done all their testing on these rather powerful V100s. You'll we'll also need 64-bit Python 3.7, PyTorch 1.7.1, and a CUDA toolkit of at least 11.0 or 11.1 if you're on 3090 like me. And there are a few Python libraries. So let's dive into this bit. So first, of course, you will need your NVIDIA GPU and your NVIDIA GPU drivers. So you can download the drivers. Links are, of course, as always, down in the description. As you can see here, the current version is 460.39. You can click download and install that. CUDA toolkit, there I'm using Linux, x86-64, Ubuntu 2004, and I'm using a local run file. And you get the two commands there to download it and then install it. I am also using the Deep Neural Network Library as well, NVIDIA CU DNN. Again, you can just click the download button there. And for installing PyTorch locally, the PyTorch website gives us the command there. So stable Linux, I'm using pip in Python and 11.0. Okay, so I've got all these bits and pieces installed. I've got my drivers, I've got my NVIDIA toolkit, I've got my Deep Neural Network Library, and I am ready to go. So I can git clone. As always, you know, you can just scroll up here drop that down and paste that into your clipboard and, and just git clone that. There we go. So git clone, I've got it, and I'm ready to create my new Python environment. So let's uh, let's do this. I've, I've downloaded it, I'm in that directory, and I'm gonna create my new Python 3.7 environment with conda create minus minus name, and I'm using the rather imaginative sg2 ada-pt there. That will do its business and then say, hey, you need to activate in this environment. So let's let's activate it. Let's activate it. There we go. New environment activated. Now I need to do this pip install. As mentioned, you can get that from the PyTorch website. Paste that in there and that will download and install Torch 1.7.1, Torch Vision and Torch Audio. Now this will take a few seconds, so I will just modify time slightly. And there we go, so that's PyTorch installed. Now, if we scroll down, they do provide some information about the extra requirements here with this pip install, but I found that one was missing a few bits and pieces. 
So there is my pip install. Uh, click requests Ninja, ImageIO, and ImageIO FFmpeg, DQDM, PSU tool, SciPy, and SciPing. So let's just pop that command in and pip install those required packages as well. Once all those have gone through, then you are ready to run. There's also a Docker file for the Docker users as well. So there we go, Docker users, use the provided Docker file. So if you want to use Docker, then go ahead. There is a Docker file there for you. Uh, also some notes there for Microsoft Windows users version. Uh, you will need to uh, have this Visual Studio Community Edition and make sure it is in there in the path as well. Anyway, so once you've got all that, you've, you've, you've got all your drivers, you've downloaded PyTorch, you've installed all these requirements, you're ready to start running. You're ready to start running. So let's do this example generates command here. Now this is using one of the pickles that I've trained on this already, not very far through, so 592, so not, not quite a thousand yet. So uh, don't expect the most amazing images, but it is still fairly reasonable. We can pop that in, and there it goes, and generate some images. By default, that goes into this out directory. So there we are, let's look at these seeds. And there we go, there's the first seed. It's some sort of bird, and as is that one, and, and as is that, and, and that is rather a curious sort of cyclops bird. But uh, yes, there you go. So we've got the generator working. That's excellent stuff. And there's also a projector as well. Uh, I have already run that because that takes a little while. Uh, does a thousand iterations by default. So there's there's my target. That's the image I want to create. And this is the image it ended up creating, which is close apart from the rather curious eye. And as always, you also get the projection video. Now, if you've played with the projector previously, you'll notice that this is a little bit slower and smoother than the previous version, which seemed to zip through in about 10 or 15 seconds, I think it was. Uh, this is now about one and a half uh, minutes, so it'll go through slowly, slowly, but slowly getting closer and closer towards the target image. Certainly worth playing with those and creating lots of really weird videos. Uh, I particularly like doing out of domain images uh, because they look very, very strange indeed. But there's the projector. You get your little video. That's ace. And uh, you also get this projected W space latent in there as well. So you can save lots of those and then just interpolate between them which is also great fun, excellent stuff. So how do we get all this going? Well, let's, let's scroll down a little bit more and we've got the projecting images there using networks in Python and we're on to our preparing data sets. So data sets, lots, lots to talk about in data sets. Now, if you've got some old TensorFlow pickles, then they've got this legacy.py, uh, which you can convert. So you can convert your old TensorFlow pickle into the new Stargan ADA PyTorch pickle just minus source minus destination that's that's quite good quite easy uh, now there's also this great website over here from justin pinkney and this is the, the only public domain uh, pickle on there and uh, i tried converting that one into the new pytorch and i got this error unknown tensorflow kwrg resolution underscore w however however i was able to convert it because i just used the previous tensorflow stargen 2 ada started training doesn't really matter what data set you'll use and uh, you get this network snapshot 000 pickle and that one did convert okay so that gave me something to do the transfer learning from it tends to be a lot quicker if you do transfer learning from something even if it's wildly out of domain uh, like these birds and faces were now if you've got uh, some old tf records then you'll have to unpack those first uh, using the old stargen 2 ada data set tool so stargen 2 ada data set unpack That'll give you some unpacked records and you put it into that whatever directory you want to unpack them into and then you can create the new data set tool or if you've already got uh, your data set you've already got a directory filled with uh, images either 1024 by 1024 or 512 by 512 or 256 by 256 whatever whatever you're training with you just source data sets and as we can see it's now using this new zip format so if we pop over here there we go you got the birds as you can see, it's a little bit smaller, so 1024 by 1024, and uh, that's a 512 by 512. There's about uh, the same number of images in each, about 1,500. So a uh, little bit smaller on the data bet size because it's, uh, it's zipped, but um, yeah, okay, that's cool. So you've got your data sets, and uh, now you're ready to begin training. So training. Now there's an example training one down here. Let me scroll down a little bit here. Scroll down. Training new networks. Give you some, gives you some examples got the various base configs there uh, I tend to use the Stargan 2 config uh, auto is all right but um, yes uh, and they've also got a few options there as well that you want to play with but let's let's have a look at these in a bit more detail so 
Disabling metrics uh, obviously improves performance. You get sort of 10% boost at least on that because it doesn't have to generate the metrics. And uh, even with the new ADA, all, all the augmentation stuff, um, it's, it's still worth using the mirror option in some cases. So that's what I've done there. So I've got mirror one. You've also got snap. Snap is a very, uh, very handy one to use. By default, it's 50. Um, so you have to wait quite a long time before it will generate a network snapshot. I tend to drop that down. Uh, obviously, depending on the size of the network that I'm doing, I might have that at four for 1024 by 1024 networks uh, or six or eight for 512 by 512. So you see here, I've got a, a batch size of four there. That's the default one and eight minutes. So basically just times that number by that number and that's how often it will save. Um, so if I was saving every seven, you know, every seven ticks, that would take about an hour uh, to generate a new network snapshot. And as mentioned, the config Stargan 2. Uh, the performance options, uh, we've got a couple of them there, which make things a lot slower, certainly on my 3090. Uh, you can use NHWC memory format for FP16, and you can disable mixed precision training. That makes it uh, about half as fast as it normally is. Uh, now, if you turn the benchmarking off at the beginning, uh, then it will use less RAM initially. You can see here there's a big spike in GPU memory on tick zero, which then drops down. Uh, but that does impact performance and means the rest of the ticks will also be a lot slower. Uh, GPU batch can increase performance as well and sort of change the amount of memory that you need on your GPU. So this is 512 by 512 um, and this is 3090 stock edition. So with the default batch size of four, as you can see there, the initial GPU memory usage is almost 12 and then it drops down to about four. I start to pump up this batch size a little bit. So if I've got batch size 12, then uh, this uses even more memory to start with, 17.83, but the continuing GPU usage is about 12 gig of VRAM there. Now this does actually read as about 15.5 gig uh, in NVIDIA SMI. So there seems to be about a four gig discrepancy each time between what NVIDIA SMI says is being used and what this output is. Don't know quite what is going on there. Here with a batch size of 16, so this is almost filling up the card entirely. Starts off with GPU usage of 17.39, drops down to about 14 or 19.5 according to NVIDIA SMI. However, once I go up to batch size 20, uh, then there's a bit of a performance drop off. So as you can see, according to the default there, 8 minutes 21, I've got batch size 16, so four times that. Then I'm shaving off about a minute on each tick, which is okay, that's not too bad. Uh, but once it gets up to a higher batch size, uh, it actually starts to get a little bit slower. And uh, that, that pretty much fills up my card, <laughs> 22.3 gig use. So that's, that's about as high as I can go uh, with 512 by 512. Obviously, if your images are bigger, then you won't be able to have as big a batch size. Or if they're smaller, then you can have an even, even larger batch size. Uh, I haven't tried yet with 256 by 256 and even higher batch sizes. But uh, whatever GPU memory you've got available, um, have a play, see what your ticks come out as, and you may be able to get a little bit more performance out of it. So there we go. That that's that covers it about for Stargun 2 ADA PyTorch. Uh, do enjoy, have some fun, and uh, I'll enjoy seeing what you make with it. Rodent out.